Hey, okay. So this video is going to be uh, about a fairly common topic that most of you should probably get a chance to do once in a while, and that's update the Open APS docs. So uh, Dana really encourages that if you notice something in the docs that needs updating or is out of date, uh, to try and do a PR, a pull request, in order to update them. Um, a lot of you are probably pretty nervous about doing a PR, uh, even though it's in the docs, it's not very visual, so I'm going to help you through with an example of something um, so you can kind of follow through how you would do that PR and get that in there. So the first thing is most of you probably have started by forking a copy of the Open APS docs to your uh, GitHub account, your your account. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Open APS uh, account, github.com slash open APS, find the docs, click on that, and you're going to fork a copy over. So you just push fork. And when you do fork it over, you actually will end up at your own copy. I already had one, but you'll have your own copy of uh, open APS's docs. And within there are all of the pages that are used to build those documents. So um, you can go through, uh, for example, walkthroughs. All of the different pages are all here. And inside these pages in this folder structure um, is how those documents that you see here are generated. There's a template that runs through those pages, those ugly looking folders and pages. Um, like this and convert them into a slightly prettier version that you see here. So the first thing you're going to do is fork, which is great. You're going to go ahead and fork that copy over so you have a copy. And you only have to do that once. So as long as you have a fork, you don't need to worry about it for the purposes of updating um, open EPS docs. It's actually pretty easy. You can just leave that fork there. So the one that I'm thinking about is actually there's an outdated page, I think, um, on installing Open APS on your rig page. I was scrolling through this the other day and somebody said, hey, it says the first question is what would you like to call your loop directory? And I couldn't remember if that was the case or not. And he said, no, I don't remember being prompted for that. Hmm. So. I could go through and check whether or not that was the case by going to the actual code itself and verifying it, which I did because I didn't want to practice setting up a rig with that. So I could go to the actual code. This is more than you need to know, but bear with me because it's something I think some people might be interested in. You could go to the actual setup code, that script that runs, and you can go, it's in the bin and you can find it under orf0 setup.sh. This is the setup script. You can read it all there, but the interesting part is that setup script used to um, prompt for that. I remember that. So he's telling me it doesn't ask for that anymore. So one of the things I can do is check the history of how this particular page was edited, and it might tell me an idea of the commits that were changes to this page in particular. So I would be able to see how this code has been changing around. So I can look down here and see if I see anything that says removing the my open APS directory prompt, I would expect to be in here. So if I go through these um, issues and I look down and I look down and I look down, um, ah, there it is. Uh, Auto-tune, auto-sense on by default, don't ask about my open APS directory. So I can click on this commit back in September that was changed and I can see in red they took out that prompt. So indeed that guy's correct, that prompt doesn't show up anymore. So let's update the docs so that it reflects better how the current situation is. So I can go back to the docs and I say, okay, so this obviously about what would you like to call your loop directory, that's out of date. So I'm going to go down here to the latest um, tag and it opens up a little page. So I'm on the page I want to edit and I'm going to click on the edit on GitHub. This click button right here will take me 
to a way that I can edit this page directly. It's super easy that way. And it tells me here in this blue box something that's fairly important. It says I'm editing a file in a project I don't have right access to. In other words, I'm in Open APS's version of Docs. I'm not in my fork or my version. And that's good because I don't I want to make sure this gets reviewed. I want to make sure Dana and Scott check it and they see whether or not they agree with the changes. And so what's happening here is that automatically this template is um, taking a snapshot of what you saw online and it's going to create a new branch. Um, so you're, n you're not going to mess anything up on their fork. You're not going to do anything wrong. And you're going to go through and change what it is that you'd like to change. And in particular, on this one, we're changing this note about the first uh, instruction. So you can say, important note. Uh, change this however you want. Uh, previous versions of setup script would prompt for my open APS directory name. This is outdated. Screenshot below will be updated shortly. So we can do that. We can delete um, this portion. And now we've fixed that up. So let's see, you can click on the preview changes and you can see how this will look. In red, it'll show you what it took out. In green, it'll show you what you added. And so now the page will read important note, previous versions of setup script would prompt for my open APS directory name. This is outdated. Screenshot below will be updated shortly. Perfect. That's how I want it to look. I can go ahead. Oh, here's another one. And take that out because that's not going to be prompted anymore. There we go. And so now I can say uh, removed mention of open API of my open APS. So now I'm telling a very brief description of what my proposed changes are um, that I'm doing to the page. I'm going to say propose file change. And here's the really cool thing. What it did was over on my fork, my repository of the Open APS docs, it created a brand new branch. And that branch is absolutely identical to Open APS's master branch. It's they're identical. It set it up that way, except for whatever changes I just saved. So this patch 36 contains a branch that exactly mirrors except for this one change. And I can see right here in the red and the green what's being taken out, what's being added. And it looks great. This is exactly what I want. And I can tell that it's headed from my cookbooks over to the main cookbooks at Dana and Scott's repository where they keep everything in the library. So it's headed in the same, in the correct direction. And if I create this pull request, I can say uh, setup script was updated to remove my open APS directory naming prompt. We'll follow up with updated screenshot later. Now, if you had multiple changes on multiple pages, you can do them uh, one of two ways. Let's just do this right here. Um, you can tell Dana, for example, Dana, please hold off merging this pull request. More changes to come. Okay, so you can put that in there. Dana will see that. She'll see what this is about. And let's say we find another place somewhere else that we want to update the, a couple pages. So on my patch 36, I've got this going. Let's create the pull request. There we go. I'm Dana now has a pull request to the docs 
that will update that, she can go ahead and do that. That's perfect. Um, so let's go back to the Open APS docs and see if there was anything else uh, we wanted to change. Mm, let's say you wanted uh, troubleshooting scripts. Hold on, I'm going to pause this for one second. Okay, we're back. I just wanted to find an example of another page that we could make an edit on so you can see how you can lump multiple pages into the same pull request uh, on GitHub. So one of the examples that I found that could be improved, for example, is that uh, this page here says, please make a PR to the docs um, so that information is permanently stored for others to see. It was under this where to go for help. I was looking down here, I said, yeah, it'd be good if people said, oh, make a PR to the docs. I don't know how to do that. Where can I find the link? Well, we do have a link here that says make your first PR. And if I click on that, I'm going to right click, open in a new tab so we can see it. It says here, oh, loops in progress. Well, maybe we actually want to make this go to this page. Let's click on that page. Yes, that's the page that has all the instructions on how to do the things that I'm working out on the video. So this would be a good page for us to link to. You can copy that page. Um, you can kind of see, if you want, the structure of all of these pages in GitHub. You can edit. Um, you can see all of these things. You can look at all of these. This works out really well. But the thing is, we kind of want to group this all together on that previous pull request. I want to make all of these edits. So if we remember right, I wanted to do it on patch 36. This has it. So I want to show you how you can come back and add more pages to do that. So we're going to go to my patch 36. I'm going to go to my profile. I'm going to go to my open APS docs. I can see I'm in my version of it. I'm going to find my branch that is patch 36. Actually here, let me show you some other view patch 36 and I can go to this branch and I can now go and find that particular page where to go for help. I can find that page. It's in communication support channels kind of thing so I can go and find that page. Let's go find it. Under docs it was under uh, I think it was under here communication support channels. Perfect. I found the page. And I just found where I want to make that link. So I can go ahead and say I'm going to edit this page. And I can say, please make a PR. How about I make that a link now? Let's say PR to the docs. And I can say, there's the link. I just added a link. That's the markdown format for adding a link to the docs. I can preview my changes and see, yep, indeed, this is now a link and it goes out to the correct page. Um, so it's perfect. I get a preview. I can see it's good. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to say added PR uh, instruction page link. I'm going to commit it directly to page or patch 36. And what you'll notice now is that if I go back to that pull request that I had to the docs, I can go back to there and I can look at this pull request that I had. And now it's recorded both of the changes that I want. It has the original one we started with as well as this updated one, which is perfect. It shows I added the link. And so I can keep adding to those if it changes. Um, and link added. So I can I can change those. You can keep doing those. So basically I can pile all of them on into one big thing. So anytime you have an active PR pull request um, that hasn't been merged yet, any changes you make to the branch that's involved is going to automatically be added to that pull request. So you can keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Um, 
if you've made a request in there, you can go back to the conversation tab. If you've made a request in here for her to hold off merging it, you can say, okay, good to go. Now all pages edited. Thanks. Okay, so you can do that. You can say uh, comment and you're good. So that will let it go. If you decide you've changed your mind and you just regret all the things that you wanted to do, you can close your pull request before it gets merged and you'll be fine. So that's how to do a PR for the docs. Um, it's really simple and basically uh, so long as you use that little link here on the edit in GitHub, it'll create a brand new branch that you can automatically um, do your pull request for. So hopefully that helps and enjoy. Keep those docs up to date. Bye.